Hello everybody, it's Holly from Besotted Orchids. Long time no see. I am so glad to be back filming again. I have been very, very busy doing other things in life. Um, since I have filmed last, I have done seven pollinator talks at local libraries, two different orchid talks, one of which was held here in my home, which was really, really fun. Um, I had a garden club called the Late Bloomers. They showed up, 17 women showed up, and they did a potting, and they learned about orchids, so that was really, really fun. And I, of course, been gardening on this never-ending project called My Property. It never ends. There is so much work to do out there. The vegetable garden alone is 50 by 50, and that's a lot of garden to take care of. But I do a lot of canning, a lot of preserving, so, and we like to eat out of the garden in the summer. It's just healthier for you and working on some perennial beds and whatnot. Um, doing that, and my daughter has opened something that is very unique. She has opened the Oopsie-Daisy, which is a beautiful traveling greenhouse. She's gonna be, she did a soft opening at her home this weekend, which went really well. And she's going to be hitting the road with the Oopsie-Daisy and traveling. I think that's really, really cool. So that is a mobile greenhouse, which you do not see. I think that's fabulous. So, anyhow, let's talk orchids. I have, I, it's going to be a mishmash. I'm just going to warn you. It's going to be a mishmash day for the orchids. Let's start out, since we did discuss the garden club that came. These are seedlings, and they did pot on some seedlings. So, 17 of my seedlings I got from Carmel Orchids did move on to new homes. Look at this. Gorgeous. I have four here that I have saved for myself, a couple others in the other room. But um, I really am focusing on with the seedlings keeping the, um, oh my goodness, this is a Prostechia cochleata, the clamshell orchid, it's going to smell amazing. I have kept two of those in this basket and two of the Kaylee cat Miltonia, Miltonia. Not to be confused with Miltoniopsis. Too many vendors, sellers, whoever, just growers are calling the Miltoniopsis and Miltonia the same thing. They're not the same plant. They're totally different plants. So I'm done on that rant. But they, they do require different care. So you do want to know if you have a Miltonia. You do want to know that. Um, so I did 17 of the babies move to new homes, 17 less things I have to handle every week. And I sold four of my larger orchids. Um, I say larger than I go into Little Norman. <laughs> Little Norman left. It was just a very tightly configured white Tuganago orchid. I mean, very tight, tight. All the blooms were tight in there. And I just preferred my larger Roy Tuganaga. So I, I have two yet I did keep. Um, i am reached a point with my collection that I need to not necessarily downsize, that's a scary word, downsize orchids, but I do need to focus in on what I truly want in the collection. And y'all, you know, if I want to add a few more, add a few more, but that's because I've made a little space by getting rid of some of the ones I don't necessarily really am not in love with, or I have something very similar. So I did get, <laughs> stop saying get rid of, I did rehome, people purchased, um, one of my Catante, the Oncidium types, the Catante Orange Kiss, that one went to a new home. The very large impulse purchase I made of the tall purple um, uh, Dendrobium Phalaenopsis type from Kingwood, that went to a new home. And another Oncidium that, no name, I don't know what it was. Maybe I'm, I'm almost regretting it now. I almost feel like it might have been a burgundy. But anyhow, it's at a new home. So four of my larger orchids went. And 17 of the babies. So yay for me. I got rid of a few orchids, which let's not kid ourselves. They'll probably be replaced with something else in the future. So I want to show you a spike, a first time spike. Look at that down there, the sheath. Oh, there's a leaf right there is the sheath. And you can see a little bit of the red anthocyanin on the leaf starting, which is because I have moved the location. Um, both windows are facing the same way. So I think it just has to do with the shelving and the roof line. 
Over here, the roof is 30 feet above. There's no shadow from the roof line on this window here in the dining room. Um, oh, FedEx. Anyhow, I don't need to worry about that. The um, and the sign in is forming because there's a little bit of an awful lot of sun on it, which it wants. So I'm moving more of the cat layers and bandas here. I want them in the dining room window, which you've seen before. Not a large window space. I can't really overcrowd it. It is a dining room. I want it to look nice. But the things that require more light, they are moving here. I do, I do really, really want that. So we shall see. And of course, no ID. This did come from Carmela Orchids about two, two years ago. We will see together what this is. There is a tag somewhere. Trust me. I have the tags. I don't, oh my goodness. Um, always says no storage, but there is storage. So anyhow, we're going to move on. Well, let's move on to this one first. I did film a video last week. I actually did film. I filmed the repotting, the separating and repotting of my Advanced Australia, the massive zygopendulum that I had. And you say, you, you divided this? Why is it so large? Because this is half of that plant. This is a beast. This is a rather, rather large psychopendulum. And this is only half. The other half is potted. And one of these halves will be going to a new home. I don't need so many. But I did film how to do all that. And then it magically disappeared. I don't know where it went. So I was, was a little disheartened by that. But it happens. It happens. So I do have a psychopendulum that needs to go to a new home. And I'm sure this is just going to take off and... It just seems to be going like wildfire. And while we do have the zygopedalums here, I want to show you this. This is the green gecko. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, this is only one balloon. But it's not doing the best. It's in recovery mode. This was going downhill very quickly, and I don't understand why, because my other zygopedalums are doing extremely well. But what I did was move it to terracotta and I'm seeing a big difference. I'm telling you for my home environment and my care, my plants need to be sitting in terracotta. It's just the way, it, just for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody. What you hear on my channel and on anybody's channel you need to keep in mind is really pertinent to their location, especially people who are growing indoors. It's where you live in the world. Are you in the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere? Do you have a nice sunny location? What kind of growth space do you have? All of that is very important. And it is, it's your own little microclimate in your home. So you have to find out what works for you. I found, in fact, all my plastic pots that I drilled all the holes in or bought with holes. They're literally going to the recycle bin today. They're gone. I no longer want them. I need to clear out my garage. They're out of here. So, um, Clay pots and terracotta all the way for me. And what I did pot this in, the zygopedalum, I did use the, um, I want to say Better Homes and Gardens or Better Grow, whatever mix it is. You pick up at Lowe's, Amazon. I ordered this from Amazon, but it had peat in it. So I did use that to have a little more extra moisture retention in the zygos because they like their water. So I'm really, really pleased that the green gecko is surviving. I was really worried about it. Not worried about it in general because I didn't know what it was until it bloomed. <laughs> you know the story. I have a Maxillaria tenofolia coming into bloom. It has one bloom. Now it's not only going to have one bloom, it's only one bloom open yet. The other buds are forming. But I do want you to see. If I can get this up here to the camera. I don't know if you can see the lip on it. It has a lightly orange speckled lip and it smells like peaches. I'm not kidding. It smells like peaches. Mm. A nice warm peach. Wonderful. And this looks beautiful when it's not even in bud. Now, if you want to see where the buds are forming, if you have a maxillary tenifolia, you need to look at the base of the pseudo bulb. That's where it will come out the bud will form at the base of the pseudo bulbs. Very beautiful plant, even when it's not in bloom. Now, I wanna show you these. It's not gonna be a long video because I do have to get down to the library. I have to download these videos at the library because their uh, internet is so much faster. Thankfully, we're very close to the library. So, 
This is Miltoni Opsis. I'm sure you've seen it before. Princess Diana. Four beautiful blooms. But we must showcase this while it's still blooming. Beautiful. And the fragrance. Rose with a twist of some kind of citrus. It's very, very nice. Now, the funny thing is, the Hilo Big Shot, look at that. Only two blooms, but I'm moving some of my, some of my brassias and things, excuse me. I am moving to the west facing window so that they get more light. I think some of the oncidiums were struggling, especially the brassia types were struggling. So they're in an east facing window and I love it at night when I see them just flooded with light. It's wonderful. So these two, let me see if I can line them up together for you to see. Color coordinate so abs. Look at that. Is that a picture? That's so pretty. That's the way I want to live my life. <laughs> These are color coordinated beautifully. But not only that, they smell identical. Identical. Spot on. Rose with a hint of citrus. Absolutely beautiful. So I am happy with the collection. I am tweaking some things. My husband has put a, um, a pin oak in the front yard, which I'm looking at. So my big windows that you normally see, the big windows in the dining room, I'm afraid they'll be shaded. So I am thinking he may see that. He may see that living somewhere else on the property. <laughs> I'm just afraid. I don't want to run a lot of LED lights. I want to use a lot of the windows and the natural lighting. Um, although I will be happy, I, I will have to step it up a little bit of the LED lighting. I understand that in the other room, but um, I think the tree's gonna the tree's gonna move, Reggie. The tree's gonna move. I don't think he'll even notice. He might not notice. So <laughs> we have a lot of trees we planted. The property had nothing when we moved here. Almost four acres of absolutely nothing except a tree line. Um, I never heard the wind. I it was I just missed that so much. So now when I go out. I hear the wind in the trees and I'm really happy. But I did want to um, give a shout out. We have Justin's Dutch Tropics, Tropicals. Welcome, Justin. Steve, welcome to the channel. Lily Beans, come on. My dog's name, Lilibet. I call her Lily all the time. I love the name Lily Beans. Um, Vera and Mike Long, thank you each and every one of you sub for subscribing. Now, I know the subscriber numbers are going up faster than I'm seeing names. So if I've missed somebody, I truly apologize. I don't, I don't know for some reason it's not translated into the YouTube app. It's not translating. I can see things on my app, like where you're coming from, even your age. <laughs> I mean, I can see demographics like that. So, um, it's not always translating the numbers with the name. So if I have forgotten anybody, go ahead and give me a shout out and I will give you a shout out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come to you. I just wanted to share what's going on. I have been very busy outside, sadly neglecting the channel. I'm actually supposed to be in the garage cleaning right now. <laughs> supposed to be. That was my goal today. I wanted to have the garage deep cleaned and take things to the recycle bin. So maybe on the way home from the library, I will do that. But I hope you're all having a great day. I hope things are going well for you. It's a quick little video, a little quick catch up. Um, I hope things are going well. Please take care. Be kind. Um, so much unrest in the world right now. Take time to go out in nature. It's really, really critical. My son and I are actually going to be walking back to the local waterfall here. It seems like we're not going to get the garage clean today. seems like that's not happening. <laughs> I have a whole list of things I'd rather do. So, um... Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching. And above all, enjoy those orchids.